Good evening, everybody. You are now listening to WLS, the voice of Prairie Farmer, Chicago. everyone. The makers of Johnson's Wax let loose another lively load of laughter and lyrics with Rico Marcelli's orchestra, Kay Donner, Hugh Studebaker, and Marion and Jim as those sapient citizens, Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Marcelli and his men begin the broadcast with Fine and Dandy. Wrap it up, Rico. <laughs> Marcelli's sparkling music, just remember that you can have sparkling floors and linoleum without any work of rubbing or buffing. Just try Johnson's Glow Coat, the easy-to-use liquid floor polish that shines as it dries. again, we wend our way to Wistful Vista, via the wireless. And we find Fibber McGee and Molly talking to their more or less handyman, Silly Watson. I guess we better get down to the basement and fix that furnace. You know anything about boilers, Sil? What? I said, you know anything about furnace boilers? Yes, sir. What do y'all think is the matter with the furnace boiler? What, Silly? I say, what's the matter with your old furnace boiler? <laughs> It won't heat. Oh. There you are. In words of one syllable, it won't heat. And I'm getting so cold, I'll soon be too numb to care. <laughs> beautiful but numb. What was that, McGee? <laughs> I says you're beautiful but come, silly. We better get on downstairs and get started. See you later, Molly. Later nothing. I'm going right along with you. You see, silly, this here job of furnace repairing is a job that calls for judgment and precision. Ain't no job for amateurs. Yes, I think so. I'll do the thinking, Phil. <laughs> You'll try anything once, won't you, McGee? You bet. <laughs> oh, is that so? <laughs> now, listen here now, Phil. I'll explain this here boiler to you. Yes. Now, this here gadget down here toward the base of the boiler, silly, is a cinder roller. You take the big clinkers and you put them through them rollers McGee, and... McGee, huh? tis nothing of the kind. That's the ringer off me washing machine. Oh, <laughs> Well, some furnaces has got equipment on to them like that. Now, wait till I open the door. Now, take a look inside there, Sil. Right there's where you'll find the trouble. Yes, I'm looking. What do you see? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Good. What did I tell you, Molly? There ain't nothing wrong on the inside of it. Except maybe the fire clay is cracked off my dissolve. The what? The fire clay. All boilers, Molly, is coated inside with a special kind of plaster. Kind of a clay that resists heat. <laughs> I used to be a kind of an expert on the fire clay myself. <clears throat> fire clay McGee, they called me in them days. Fire clay McGee, the finest, fastest furnace fixer from Fresno to Florida. Oh. <laughs> you want to hear about it, Silly? No, sir. Well, sir, this here was way back in uh, 1904. Yes. Or no, uh, no. 1905 it was. Yes. No. No. 1903. Or was it five? Why? Let's see. They had to shoot old Bruno for killing the neighbor's sheep in 1902. Oh, the poor dog. 
What you mean, dog? Old Bruno was my uncle. <laughs> Once removed. <laughs> well, I guess it was 1905 at that. I was just mixing up a batch of my patented McGee non-cracked fireproof fire clay one day into a big barrel, getting it to the right consistency. But I says I was getting it to the right consistency. Oh, yeah, say, you got to do that. <laughs> well, sir, this here fire clay was just about right, like a thin plaque. When all of a sudden, a bunch of tough kids come along. When my back was turned, they started throwing gobs of this here fire clay plaster at me. Well, sir, I finally thought they'd had enough fun, so I started to chase them. But shucks, I couldn't move a foot. That there plaster had dried on me so fast and so hard, I was just powerless to move my feet and legs. And when they seen that, they just laughed fit to bust and kept on pelting me. Gob after gob of that there plaster hit me. Smack, splash. Smack dab on the shoulders, the arms, the neck, on the face, till I was completely covered up with that fast hardening clay. Uh, how y'all get your breath, Mr. McGee? Ah, uh, well, uh, by breathing real quick and winking fast, I kept my nostrils nice and closing up, but my mouth was sealed shut. Oh, and to think I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, after they finally flung all my special plaster onto me, that pack of kids left. The mud pack. Yeah. You listening to this, silly? What? I says, you getting the benefit of this here talk? Yes, if there is any benefit, I get it. <laughs> Good. Well, sir, there I stood, powerless to move a muscle. That there plaster getting harder and harder all the time. That was on a Tuesday. On Saturday morning, a fella come by with his gal, and he sees me. Hot dog, says he. Look, baby, he says. Whoever done that statue knew what they was doing. You bet you, says she, real enthusiastic. It's good, all right, but is it art? <laughs> and he says, sure, it's art. You can't tell what it means, can you? <laughs> and finally, a crowd grew, all complimenting the feller that had posed that their perfect figure of a man. Oh, my. <laughs> ah, then the reporters come. And all over the world, newspapers come out saying, the finest sculpture ever sculpted. Discovered in the backyard of a boiler plant. Mysterious statue, a work of unknown genius. <laughs> oh, stuff like that. <laughs> all I could do was stand there and watch. Getting weaker and hungrier all the time. Cheated out of my meals and sleep. Cheated? Uh, Statues ain't cheated, McGee. Huh? They're chiseled. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir. Finally, they hauled me away to an art museum and put me onto a pedestal. Right next to the Venus de Milo. Now, listen, don't tell us she... Put her arm around you. <laughs> there I had to stand. Day after day, millions of people staring at me. So why didn't you all wink at somebody, boy? What say? I say, why didn't you all wink at me little eyes you at somebody? <laughs> oh, I did. Twice. First time I caught a man's eye and winked, and he just says, I, George, ain't that statue lifelike. <laughs> Second time I winked to the gal, and she slapped my face and broke two fingers on her right hand. Oh, my well, sir, one day, just as my strength was leaving me, I give one supreme effort, leaned forward and strained every muscle under the plaster, and crash, onto the floor I fell, smashing that fire clay coating off into a million pieces. I was saved. It was no time till they had me in the hospital, nursing me back to hell. Well, why didn't you all sue that museum, boy? <laughs> sue? I did. <laughs> they threw the case out of court. On what grounds, McGee? <laughs> Shucks. They claimed my testimony wasn't reliable. <laughs> Said I'd been plastered for two weeks. <laughs> Come on, there. Well, now, now that Fibber has vacated his pedestal, we have a real work of art to offer you. Our melodious model, Miss Kay Donna, who sings and sings like no other one. All right, Kay. <laughs> No other one, yes, no other one Can ever do what you do when you do what you do Kissing me, oh, no other one Yes, no other one Can ever make me like you, like you Like I'd like to constantly Talk about caresses with an 18 carat thrill, I don't have to make three guesses. 
When I'm thinking of someone who can fill the bill, there's no other one. Yes, no other one can ever make me want you, want you say. Who do you love in a great big way? No other one. No other one. There isn't any other one. Can ever do what you do when you do what you do, kissing me. There's no other one. There's no other one. Can ever make me like you, like you, like I'd like to constantly talk about those sweet caresses with an 18 carat spear. I don't have to make we get to when thinking of someone who can feel the fear. No other one, there's no other one can ever make me want you, want you say. Who do you love in a great big way? There'd better be no other one. There'd better be no other one. Friends, that was Kay Donna singing No Other One. And it might well be the theme song for Johnson's Glow Coat. For among floor polishes, there's no other one that can give you the lasting beauty and protection that Johnson's Glow hey, Coat... Hey, Harpo, uh, I got a riddle for you. <laughs> Why is that there stratosphere balloon like a coat at Johnson's Glow Coat? Yes. Give up? Well, sir, <laughs> the wear and tear of 74,000 feet don't mean nothing. <laughs> well, well, that's the height of something or other. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, folks, you know how I like to talk about Johnson's Glow Coat, the marvelous no-rubbing floor polish made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Well, it seems I've been challenged by a young woman who says she knows more about Glow Coat than I do because she's been using it on her own kitchen linoleum for several years. She's here in the studio tonight. Won't you step over here, Mrs. Wright? You're at liberty to say anything you please about Glow Coat. Well, I'm delighted to, Mr. Wilcox. You know, when I started housekeeping not so many years ago... I worked so hard trying to keep my kitchen linoleum clean. Really, it was pathetic. No matter how often I scrubbed it, that floor was dirty-looking most of the time. And then one day when I was feeling particularly tired and discouraged, a neighbor of mine dropped in and told me about Johnson's Glow Coat. Well, I ordered some that very day. And I can't tell you what a difference it made in the looks of that linoleum. It took only a few minutes to do the whole floor, and it was so easy to apply. Why, it didn't seem like any work at all. And 20 minutes after I had put glow coat on the floor, it was perfectly dry. And the linoleum had a grand, bright polish. Now my floor stayed clean and shining with practically no effort on my part. I have more time to rest and enjoy life. Believe me, I'm a real booster for Johnson's glow coat. And any woman who is tired of floor scrubbing should certainly try it. Oh, I guess I forgot to mention that you don't have to do any rubbing or buffing when you use glow coat. Thank you, Mrs. Wright. Treasure Island, a grand number in four tempos. Marcelli plays it as a foxtrot, a Viennese waltz, a tango, a rumba. Take it, Rico. <laughs> Landed on the silvery shore. I looked for gold on Treasure Island, and I found that gold when you gave your golden love to me.
if our engineer, Mr. Harold Stonewall Jackson, will switch us back to 79 Wistful Vista, we'll find Fibber McGee and Molly and Silly Watson all ready to go on with their furnace fixing down in the McGee basement. Well, McGee, you won't accomplish anything by standing there looking at it. Oh, now, Molly, I was just figuring out the right way to get at this here problem. <clears throat> no use rushing in and getting it all balled up. Let's see now. Say, you know what we better do? Yes. Turn off some of your hot air and get some in the furnace. <laughs> <laughs> what do we better do, boss? We better build a fire in here so we can see how she draws. That way we can tell better what's the matter. Well, McGee, that's the first idea you've had today. Well, you'll have to admit when I get them, they're hot. <laughs> Don't you get it, Molly? Build a fire? A hot idea? It ain't funny, <laughs> McGee. Okay. Now get to work, both of you. Yes. Shall we use these here papers? Yep. Tear them up and crumple them, silly, so you can get... Here, here, here. You can't use those papers. Huh? Those are me dress patterns. What's the matter with you, silly? You ought to have better sense than that. Well, I didn't think it was no good, boss, on account of the all full of little holes. <laughs> yeah, moths have been at them, probably. Use them newspapers there, boy. Yes. What are we going to use for kin in the fire, boss? What say? I say, what are we going to use for kin in the little old fire? <laughs> oh, kindling. Yeah. Let's see now. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, take the hatchet and chop up them long sticks over there. Yes. I'll get the paper all set in the great case. <laughs> You little old sticks is plumb full of nails, Mr. McGee. Well, well, don't dull a hatchet on them, Phil. No, sir. Hey, wait a minute, Phil. McGee, what's he chopping up? Huh? Oh, them long sticks with the nails in them? Yes. Oh, it's just some old lengths of molding that was left from Oh, the... for heaven's sake, silly. You're chopping up me curtain stretchers. Curtain stretchers? <laughs> Look at them. They're ruined. Oh, no, ma'am, they ain't ruined much. I just chopped off a couple little pieces of them at all, ma'am. Oh, is that so? Why don't you two come upstairs and chop up the piano and the dining room table? Oh, we don't need that much kindling, Molly. <laughs> oh, you don't? Well, now I'm real glad to hear that. It is here, little old box. Good for the chopper, please, ma'am. Let's see it. Yes, go ahead. That's all right. Now, is that all the paper and kindling you'll need? Yep. You needn't look for no more, Molly. Well, who is going to? I just wanted to be sure you wouldn't use that porch furniture for your fire. <laughs> Why, shucks, Molly. Don't be like that. We know what we're doing, don't we, Phil? What? I says we know what we're doing, don't we? Well, I guess you all know what I'm doing, but I don't know what you all are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Try and use some sense, McGee. I'm going on up. There. Hey, Molly. Yes? Yeah? When you get upstairs, open up the furnace draft, will you? Chucks, we'll have a roaring fire in here in no time if she's working okay. All right. Now, now, hurry up with that there kindling, boy. Yes, sir, I'm rushing right along, boy. Oh, I had me a cow, a big brown jersey. Her milk was good, but her temper was lurzy. Hi, ho, the farmer in the bell. Yeah, you is, boy. Enough kindling? Yeah, I guess. Say, this here paper is kind of damp, ain't it? Yes. I'll tell you what, son. I run up to the top of the stairs there and get that big five-gallon can. Yes, sir, but, but, but that, that's gasoline, boss. Well, what in chunk did you think I thought it was? Buttermilk? Well, go on and get it. But, but y'all ain't gonna pour that gas stuff on this here little old fire, you boss. Can you think of any surer way of making her burn? No, sir. Well, then run up and get it. Yes, sir, but that's pretty powerful stuff. And oh, I had a giraffe. His name was Harlow. He got him the quins and he couldn't swallow with a hey nutty nutty and a razzmatazz. Let's see now. Plenty of paper. Kindling. Ah, there we are. And we'll just swash her good with the gasoline and... Uh, hey there, are you coming, silly? Yes, yeah, so here he is, boy. Okay, hand her here. I'll build a real bang-up fire here. Quick the flash. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Afraid of? <laughs> Shucks, we want a fire, don't we? Here, hold the cap of the spout. I'll just dash some of this here gasoline on and... Oh, I had a horse in his name and... Hey, where are you going there, boy? Well, I I, I just happen to think it. I, I mean, I, I guess you ain't going to need me no more today, I guess. <laughs> what makes you think that, silly? 
Well, I only think that on account of I think that after you all touched the little match out there, gasoline boys, you ain't gonna need nothing more today. <laughs> oh, go on with you, silly. Don't be so dad ratted nervous. Never heard of a cigarette lighter blowing up, did you? <laughs> now then, a little more over in the corner there. Ah, yeah, but, 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 but boss, you, you already put on about two gallon already. <laughs> yeah. What if I did? Got to get the fire started, ain't we? <laughs> Hey, what's your teeth chattering for? You catching cold? No, sir. Yes, I guess I is. I think I better go home and see a doctor while I got time, boss. <laughs> okay. Uh, but give me a match before you go. And say, hey, quit leaning against that smoke pipe, boy. Hey, it's all right, boss. It ain't hot. Read it. I know it ain't hot, but it's loose. Liable to come apart at the least bump, and we'll have soot around here a foot deep. <laughs> give me a match. Yes. No, sir, I, I, I ain't got a match, sir. Chuck, you got some right behind your ear there, boy. Hand me one. Oh, never mind, I got one. Ah. Here we go. Yes, I'm afraid so. <laughs> oh, shucks. Can you imagine that? What else? Better pour the rest of this here gas on it. There. Give me another match, boy. Yes. Here you is, and here I go. Hey, silly, come back here. Silly! Let that fella go out that door and down that alley. <laughs> Shucks. Just superstitious. <laughs> now, where did I put that dead red match? Oh, yeah. Oh, shucks. Can you beat that? Well, I'll get this lit if it takes me all day. Ah. Now, then. This'll do the trick. I were Aladdin, how lucky I would be. I'd rub my little lamp and wish that you would fall in love with me. I wish that I were Winkle, who slept for 20 years. Imagine 20 years to dream of you, would that be heavenly? If I could cast a magic spell when I feel blue, I'd wave my wand. Wonderful you But if I were certain We'd never, never part I wouldn't want to be Aladdin I wouldn't want to be Rip Van Winkle Just want to be the only one in your heart I wouldn't want to be a winkle. I just want to be the only one in your heart. 
was Martelli and his men playing I Wish I Were Aladdin. With that Arabian night, Charles Levere rubbing the piano lamp. And incidentally, that's where the magic of today has it all over the wizardry of yesterday. You don't have to do any rubbing or buffing to work a magical change in the appearance of your floors or linoleum. Just try using Johnson's Glow Coat and see how much easier your housework will be. Glow Coat is a remarkable liquid polish that requires no rubbing or buffing. You merely spread a little Glow Coat lightly over the surface with a soft cloth or the long-handled Glow Coat applier. Let it dry for 20 minutes and your floor will sparkle like new with a polish that resists dirt and dust. You'll save yourself hours of work over a period of time, and you'll win the reputation of being a wonderful housekeeper if you use Johnson's Glow Coat, the new no-rubbing floor polish made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. And let me remind you that it's very economical to try Glow Coat in the larger size cans. You can save as much as one-third by ordering the larger sizes from your dealer. You're cordially invited back to see Fibber and Molly McGee on their Johnson Jamboree at NBC. On next Monday with Harlow and me and Molly, that's three, with admission free, Fibber McGee. (laughs) Well, well, come back with us next Monday night at this same hour when we understand that Fibber and Molly are going to have a nice old harvest home party. And until then, we remind you that just as the best housekeepers use Johnson's wax and Johnson's glow coat, keep their houses clean and shining, so the most particular car owners keep their cars sparkling with Johnson's Auto Wax and Cleaner. This is Harlow Linoleum Wilcox speaking, always underfoot. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.